Right, just a little video today. We're just going to be doing brakes on an Eiffel Williams HB505. This is a trailer, it's my own trailer. Um, we're just servicing it and doing the brakes ready for sale. So we will talk you through replacing brake shoes on the Eiffel Williams. So the first thing you have to do, obviously take the wheels off. Right, you don't have to take the wheels off, but I just find it easier. Take the wheels off and then if you get a small um, flattered screwdriver or it and just unpin the nut, hub nut. Um, it's a 46 mil hub nut. So unpin that, undo that, and then the drum will slide off of all the bearing in there. It's a cassette type bearing, um, so it's not really a serviceable item. Um, as long as all the grease is in there, and we don't worry too much as long as there's no play. Um, so I will show you what we do. So that's the drum removed. As you can see, brake line in had come away from the backing plate, um, which obviously is not very good because that running around loose in there can get jammed up in places, cause the brakes to lock on. Obviously that is definitely a no-go when you've got horses on board. So this is why we're replacing them, because I looked through the inspection cover on the back and I could see that this was just floating around in there, floating around inside the drum. So what we'll do, we'll take all the shoes off and inspect everything, inspect the drum, make sure it's all all right, and clean it up, fit the new shoes. Right, so when removing these brake shoes, I always remove the spring that holds the stationary shoe in position. So you push it in, you push it in, push it in and twist, and it will go through the little hole on the back of the backing plate. It just removes that, and that shoe is loose on there. You don't have to, but I always back the shoes off. So to back the shoes off is a 17 mil on the back of the backing plate and that winds that adjuster out and all you do is you pull the bottom one down and once that's out push it up release the spring and that's the shoe off obviously that's this is auto reverse so this has got the auto reverse in um, shoe on it. The top one just come off like that. So obviously that's the expander. As the brake, as the brake cable is pulled, it expands the brake shoes, push them onto the inside of the drum. So obviously that's a brake cable. This is the adjuster if you like. So there's two wedges. These sit in here, sit up inside there like that. Then as this is tightened up, as you can see it moves that in and out or up and down. So we will grease it all up and make sure it's all working properly. That's how that works. Right. As you can see how it works. So obviously it's wedge shape. That goes through there as you tighten this screw up these two wedges 
but you sit on here like this so as you pull it in the wedges ride up expanding so it'll be like that so as you apply the brakes no sorry as you adjust the brakes that wedge slides up pushing the brake shoes further apart taking up any slack right, so what we'll do is we're going to clean all this back and plate up grease the cable up while we're in here clean the stub axle so you can see drums pretty rusty inside but that'll clean up all right that'll clean up lovely While this is all off, I can show you. So this obviously goes through the brake shoe, through that hole. What you do is you twist it. I don't know if you can see on the back or not. Goes through the hole. And you twist it so it locks and it doesn't come back out the hole. Okay. So it eases that and that just fixes that shoe in place. Pretty straightforward. Self-explanatory. Right, well that's that cleaned up anyway. So all nice and clean where the bearing sits. Threads are all nice and clean. Right, let's clean the drum up. Right, let's clean the drum up. Just have a wire wheel on drill. Clean all that up. Empty it out. Let me get more brake cleaner. Obviously, don't spray the brake cleaner onto the bearing. You don't want to wash the grease out of it. around the inside of the drum. Making sure it's all clean and free from grease and debris and rubbish. see that's much better now so that is now ready 
for the new brake shoes. No lips in there at all. Very rarely do you get worn brake drums on these trailers. Never seen any worn brake drums yet. So clean up. Oh no, we've done that. So we cleaned up that. Cleaned up the drum. What we do? We've got to clean up the expander and bits and pieces so it all runs nice and smoothly operates as it should so we'll get that cleaned up I mean, it's nice and free as it should do anyway. If you want me to put it back together, we'll grease it all up. So you're just cleaning up on the places which it touches, which is this top lip here. And that slanted edge here, which is also where the expander, where the adjuster rubs on. So <laughs> those bits all cleaned up ready to be used again all right when you lubricate the brake cable put it out as far as it comes for this i'm using something called service lube plus it's just a light lubricant with low drip so just square it in there, up there. you just work it in and out a bit that's about it. Right. These are the brake shoes. Actually, they come as a pair for so one set per axle. So obviously that's the um, auto reverse brake shoe. So it does have a direction. It doesn't actually have it stamped in here. But what we do is, I'll show you. Right, in the kit, you get three springs per side. So on one side you will have, obviously the retaining spring and two springs slightly different lengths as you can see so smaller spring goes at the back end like that so directional rotation of this is that way right expander can go on just hooks through and sits then what I do it can be quite fiddly. I open it up, hanging it on the spring. I do bottom one first. And the top one. Tap them in there like that. And then we have the long spring, which clips up through there. Again, it's quite fiddly. So it clips up through there. And then it clips onto there. So 
but I'll show you. So it's important to have these springs facing the right way. So this back spring, which is a short one, obviously it goes through that way. And this one, which is the longer one, goes through from the back. So it goes through the top hole there. I don't know if you can see, but that's in sort of two sections. So it just goes through the back of that one there. So that's clipped through there. So you can just about see it. All right. So now what we have to do. All right. Now what we have to do is this bolt goes through the back. And basically, screws onto this. Sometimes it's easier to do this first, to be fair. But I didn't. Right, so that screws in there. That just pushes in there. What I do now is I will squirt a little bit of service loop in there so it's all lubricated and the little wedge it's important to know which way it goes so the wedge this lip here sits to the back so it sits in there like that and you can tell I don't know if you can see that and that's all lubed up it moves nicely so that's how it should work okay Right, and the bottom one can be quite tricky. So what you have to do, you hold the bottom one in place, try not to trap a finger. Obviously it just wants to fall out. So what I do, hold it in there, with the bottom spring, the bottom shoe. There we go, clip the bottom shoe in. You can see it's got a recess it sits in. bottom shoe clips in there and then you can pull up on this one like that right so that is the shoes now fitted it's hard to see but if you push that in that will expand the brake shoes out right so now that's fitted next thing is the little retaining clip so all i do with this little pair of pliers goes through the top through the back you twist and that's it so that keeps that shoe in a semi-fixed position obviously you can still move a little bit but not like this one that can sort of move around all over the place. Right. Now I'll show you about the auto reverse. So obviously on a lot of these trailers they have auto reverse. So general direction of tyre going forwards is that way. So when it goes that way it's going forwards and this shoe can't move back. But obviously when you go to reverse if you've got weight in the trailer it will compress the hitch up applying the brakes so obviously the brakes expand out not generally unless you've got a manual hitch lock to stop it compressing you won't be able to reverse so these auto reverses are a good idea so when it locks on it's got a slipper shoe so as you go to reverse that shoe will slip round and release the pressure on the drum I don't know if you can see that. See that very well. Quite hard to show you and uh, hold it in place at the same time. That shoot slides forward, which is on a cam. So as it slides forward, the pressure comes off the drum, and obviously that spring pulls it back into place then when you go forward you don't have to do anything good idea to be fair and it works well so now all i do so that's the brake shoes fitted and all i do is 
bit of service lube. So these little pins here are the rollers and that's what the sliding shoe rolls on. So just give it all a good, all a good lubricate. Also. Right, so now you can see these brake shoes are no longer sat on there, so it's fully expanded out now. So that would be so you can't put the drum on like that. All I do that for, just so it opens it up, so you can get a bit more lube in there just to make sure it all works and operates as it should do. Right. And I just back that right off again. So that's that, so that's the shoes all done. So we'll just run through it again. Retaining spring at the top, locks that top shoe. Smaller spring to the rear where the expander is, so that's the expander. And the longer spring is the side of the adjuster, okay? So it's always a good idea when you think you're done, just double check and look at the direction of rotation to make sure that when you go into reverse this slipper shoe slides back like i say the direction of rotation going forward is this way so when it goes into reverse you want the shoe to slide in the opposite way which it does okay all right so we put the drum on adjust it up and that's nearly it I've already checked all the bearings on it because I serviced it last week. Push it on till it's home. So there's two type of two types of hub nuts for these. This one has its own separate washer which sits on there first. Some of them you get have a washer built on. So obviously that's two separate, but the proper nuts will have a washer that will sit on there like that. And you do have to use the right ones for your hubs. So this one sits on there like that, pushes on, screws on. I'll do it so it's finger tight, rotate it around a bit. So these are 46mm um, hub nuts, so I've got a three quarter bar, a three quarter torque wrench, which does up to 406 newton meters. Now these hub nuts, as it says inside the, the hub cap, are 350 newton meters. So, just set my torque wrench up. So on this torque wrench, 350 is around there, give or take a bit. what I do, do it up a little bit, rotate it around, so 
making sure it still rotates nice and freely all the way. And tighten up a bit more. Right, you can hear that clicking off. So we're then rotate that around 20 times. Just make sure that bearing's all seated properly. And then just click it off one more time. There you go. That is that hub nut properly tightened. And then what we do, obviously we get a punch or something just to pin that nut over to stop that coming undone. Which I'll show you in a second. Doing this, I've just got a screwdriver and a hammer. Yeah, so just hammer and punch, peeing that over like that. You can do both. I have done on this one. Just for a bit of added extra security, but it doesn't make too much difference really. It's not gonna it's not gonna unwind, it's talked up correctly. So we call that done. Adjust it up. I will show you adjusting it up actually. It might make it a bit easier for you if you're doing it on your own. So what you do is you wind it on until you can no longer rotate the drum until it's nice and until it's nice and tight like that. And I back it off. One, two. Three, four, so four quarter turns. There should be no dragging on there. And it should move nice and freely. So that is what I call correctly adjusted. Gives it enough free play and when the brakes come on, it will apply the brakes and do what it should do. Okay, so that's that done brake shoes on the HP 505. I say this, this is a 2002 model, but I think these brakes are from anywhere from about 98 onwards, or I believe from 96 onwards. Um, I believe they're still used in today's brakes on a lot of trailers anyway. I say these are, um, these are not, um, hubs and brakes on these K N double O T no K N O double T so that's the brand that they are not brakes and these are 200 by 50 mil brake shoes so it's an 8 inch drum by 50 mil wide right and that's about it Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe and I'll make some more videos for you. Thank you very much.